10 styles, one artist. Can I do it? I don't know. My very good, very talented, very amazing friend Nina recently did a 10 art styles challenge and I was actually one of the styles, what the heck? And I've been wanting to do a 10 art style challenge for a really long time, but I've just never really had the motivation until now. And if you don't know what a 10 art style challenge is, it's exactly what it sounds like. You either pick 10 artists or 10 pieces of media that you admire and you study the styles. Most commonly, somebody will draw the same character in all of these styles just to see the differences between them, but I actually wanted to put a little bit of a spin on it. Not only did I want to draw in these styles, I also wanted to draw my OCs in these styles for each of their respective medias. So every single character that I draw in each of these styles will be a different character. I've never actually seen anybody do this, maybe because it's kind of cringe to insert your OCs into canons, but I'm all about being cringe. I'm all about OCX canon. I've made like four videos on it already. So, what's another one in the pile? I ended up giving myself some rules for this challenge. Rule number one is I've got to adhere to the style as best I can. But if the style varies, I'm allowed to make style edits if I think that they'd be realistic. So if the characters in an art style all have the same eye shape, I have to give my character that eye shape. But if the style has different eye shapes, then I'm allowed to make my own or pick from the existing ones, if that makes sense. Rule number two is I'm allowed to add details to more simplistic styles if I think they would enhance the design or make it appear closer to how I imagine them in my brain. I'll try not to go too overboard with the detail to make the characters still look like they are in the style that I'm emulating, but I still wanna make my characters look how I designed them originally. And sometimes the medias that I'm studying don't have references for things like curly hair. So I'm allowed to make my best guess. And the third and final rule is I have to tell you who each of these OCs is shipped with. Because, of course, most of these OCs were made for self-shipping purposes. I've decided to go ahead and get started with the sketch on screen, but the placement and inclusion of some of these sketches will change, so don't get attached to any one of them. So let's go ahead and jump into the first style. So originally I was gonna try and do these styles from simplest to most complex, and so I decided the simplest style was Gravity Falls because of the lack of shading and simple line art. I also thought that Gravity Falls would give me a lot of trouble because it is so, I guess the best word I could use to describe it is homogenous. Characters have very similar proportions. All of them have the same hand shape and eye shape. Not a lot of variation in hair type or outfit complexity, if that makes sense. And I like my characters to be very complex. I think that Gravity Falls definitely uses simplicity to its advantage when conveying things about the characters through their design. But I struggle with less is more. I think that more is more. So when it came to translating my Gravity Falls OC into the Gravity Falls style, I really thought that I would struggle a whole lot. And so that's where my second rule came into play, being allowed to add details to more simplistic styles. And so while I don't think that this design would fly in Gravity Falls, I do think that it looks like the Gravity Falls art style, if that makes sense. Mostly just the accessories on the face, like the glasses and the earrings. But those were things I didn't want to budge on, so I decided they had to go in the design. But honestly, I still think that it turned out really good, and so I was really hyped to get into the rest of the challenge. A little bit about my Gravity Falls OC, their name is Juno, they work for the FBI hunting anomalies and mysteries, but right now they are undercover in Gravity Falls working as an accountant. So here is my Gravity Falls OC in the Gravity Falls style. And according to my own rules, I do have to tell you who they're shipped with, and they are shipped with both Stan and Ford. Do with that information what you will. Next style is from something that some of you may not be familiar with. The next style is Lackadaisy, specifically the animated shorts and the pilot. The entire cast of Lackadaisy is made up of cats, if you can't tell. And so of course my character was going to be a cat. The creator of Lackadaisy, Tracy Butler, uses such good shape language in her designs. Every single cat looks different, but also still fits in with the art style is great. I highly recommend going to watch the Lackadaisy pilot here on YouTube. It's so good. I've watched it at least four or five times in the past week. The characters in Lackadaisy are of course all very unique, but most of them fall into one of two categories, round or sharp. 
And I wanted my character design to be more sharp, so the characters I'm referencing are Seraphine and Mordecai, but I've also got Mitzi up there just for reference. This is also a style I thought I would struggle with just because it's been a really long time since I've drawn cats. And I also had a specific breed in mind for my cat. My cat is a Maine Coon. And Maine Coons are, of course, notorious for being super big and fluffy, which is why I have Seraphine and Mitzi on screen because they're the cats with the fluffiest tails, arguably. I also realized that their outfit is really historically inaccurate and Lackadaisy is really good with historical accuracy. So that's another reason why my study falls a little bit short. But a little bit about my OC, his name is also Juno. He's a performer slash a gunman for the Lackadaisy Speakeasy. He was taken in by Mitzi when he was super young and so the two of them are very close. So here is my Lackadaisy OC in the Lackadaisy style, Juno 2. I think this is the last Juno in this video. And my Lackadaisy OC is shipped with Mordecai, so. This next one was a no-brainer, it's My Little Pony. I don't actually have a whole lot to say. My Little Pony G4 is extremely simple with its character design most of the time, and I actually already had an existing Pony Sona that I wanted to translate into the My Little Pony style. The main struggle wasn't replicating the style itself, it was actually translating my design from my style into the My Little Pony style because it is so simplistic. I think I talked about it a little in my self-ship video, but when I was in second and third grade, I would reference My Little Pony so heavily, so I'm already familiar with the shapes that make up a pony's body. But because all the ponies use the same base, I did do a little bit of tracing. I'm sorry. I wanted to make sure that my pony looked as on model for the show as possible. Speaking of my pony Sona, um, I'm a unicorn. I was originally a Pegasus for like five or six years after I grew out of my alicorn phase. But after thinking long and hard about it, I did decide that I would be a unicorn. Like I said, I had to remove a lot of details from their original design in order to put them in the style of My Little Pony, which I was kind of sad about. My pony has a lot of gradients. They're very fluffy. They've got different colored hooves. All things that I unfortunately had to part with for the sake of consistency. I referenced Twilight and Pinkie Pie. Twilight because she was a unicorn and had the eye shape that I wanted and Pinkie Pie because she had the hair texture that I wanted. And so I think Lucky Star turned out very cute. Maybe a little more detailed than your average background pony, but I've never been one to be in the background anyway. And here is my My Little Pony OC in the My Little Pony style. And my My Little Pony OC is shipped with Sunburst. And we are speeding through these. Next is Cookie Run Kingdom. I was super obsessed with this game in like spring of 2022, so it's been a little bit. And also Kingdom is the only game that I've played, so sorry to the other Cookie Run game fans. I actually struggled a whole lot with this one, which is weird because this is one of the ones I actually already had a design for. I've already designed my Cookie Run Kingdom OC. And Cookie Run is not the most complicated style in the world, so I don't know why I struggled with this one. I actually really wanted to redo it, but I just ran out of time. But yeah, most Cookie Run designs are in the same boat as Gravity Falls and where they followed the exact same formula. But for a lot of the newer cookies, they've actually been branching out a lot more. So that made this a little bit difficult. But yeah, as you can already see, I have Almond Cookie on screen. I'm referencing Almond Cookie. I want them to match Almond Cookie. I really like Almond Cookie guys. So I've already spoiled the last part of this speed paint, but I was actually struggling mostly with their clothes. I didn't really struggle with their proportions or anything like like that. And my main struggle was just trying to find that balance between the simplicity of Cookie Run's style and the complexity of the outfit I wanted to give them. Like what part of the outfits to keep and which parts to simplify, if that makes sense. And like I said, I don't really like how this one turned out. I don't normally like saying that about any of my designs, but I'll say it for this one, I don't really like it. But I had 10 of these to do, so I couldn't let it slow me down. I just don't think they ended up looking like an epic cookie. Maybe a rare cookie, but not an epic. So yeah, I don't really have a whole lot else to say about them. This is Gold Rush Cookie, and they look like that. They're supposed to be like a musketeer cowboy sort of thing. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Here's my Cookie Run OC in the Cookie Run style. They're shipped with almond cookie. Get out of here.
You already know what time it is. My Hero Academia. Specifically the anime. I didn't even want to try and replicate the manga. I might one day, but that day is not today. My Hero is actually the only style on here that I've actually studied before multiple times. I actually do screenshot edits. I think I showed them off in a previous video. So My Hero is a style I'm already very familiar with, even though I'm not particularly good at replicating it. It's mostly the facial structure. I draw faces very differently than they're drawn in My Hero. Uh, their eyes are very big with their noses less pronounced and mine actually leans a little bit more realistic. Well, more realistic than this anyway. But with every study I do, I feel like I'm inching closer and closer to being able to properly replicate the My Hero style, which, you know, slow progress is still progress. This is a character I've already shown off on my channel before in my most popular video, actually. This is Kier Comet, of course. They've had a little bit of a redesign since the last time that you guys saw them, but they're still pretty much mostly the same. Something I like to do in these style studies is picking a character from the series that has features most similar to what I imagine the character I'm drawing has and just referencing them. It may not be exactly the same, but it gets me closer at least. And so as you can see, I'm referencing Lady Nagant and she's actually from a season of My Hero that I haven't seen yet. I haven't watched season six or seven. I'm a fake fan, I'm sorry. But My Hero is like most other animes, very large eyes, very simple line art, very thin, minimal line weight, uh, cell shading, all things that I'm not used to, but I think I'm getting pretty good at replicating, if I do say so myself. Another thing about My Hero is all of the characters' eyes are very different, so it's hard to create a new eye shape that would fit in with the style but also be unique enough. But I feel like this drawing is the perfect blend of My Hero style and my style, even if I couldn't replicate My Hero perfectly. Anyways, here is the new and improved Kier Comet, and of course, as all true Lucky Stars know, Kier Comet is shipped with All Might. No questions in the comments, please. Bye! Next one is also kind of niche. This is FNAF Nations or Rebornica, if you want to be technical. Their styles are a little bit different, but I'm referencing FNAF Nation, so that's what I'm going to call it. This is also the only individual artist on this list, like the only one that isn't from like a franchise or like a show or something like that. This is the style of somebody who was posting on DeviantArt in 2018 that I would look up in my sixth grade writing class. And so so their style is very important to me. I talked about it in a previous video, but I'm also referencing it here. FNAF Nation's style is very simple and straightforward. Gray skin, round eyes, thin line art. Everybody has a very similar body type. Everybody's built of rectangles. And because it's Five Nights at Freddy's and everybody is a night guard, everybody's wearing the same clothes too. But something about it just captivates me. The characters are so emotive. It's so cool. I just think it's cool. I would screenshot every single piece of theirs I could get my hands on so I could study it. And because I was in sixth grade, I was really bad at it, but it was so fun. And so I think 11 year old me would be very pleased to know that I can now replicate their style with some sort of accuracy. But once again, there's not a whole lot to say here. All of the characters are made with the same base, so pretty easy to replicate. I took a few artistic liberties, like with the eyebrows and the eyeshadow, but overall, I think I did an okay job staying pretty faithful. Naf Nations, if you're watching this, I love you. You raised me. Please hit me up. I want to talk to you so bad. Please, 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 please. Anyways, here is my Five Nights at Freddy's OC Lucky in the FNAF Nation style. They are shipped with every single night guard. That's right, all of them. I can't pick my favorite. This might actually be the style I have the least to say about, mostly because I have not watched Steven Universe. <laughs> I've seen like clips of it from the most interesting episodes, but I've never actually had the self-control to sit down and watch the whole series. But Steven Universe has such an interesting style with such a good use of color and shape language, I felt like it would be sacrilegious to not study it in this video. But once again, it is very simple, so I don't have a whole lot to say. I feel like I've said that for the past like four styles, but I really just don't have anything to add. I guess my main struggle for all of these simpler styles was the fact that they were so simple and I struggle with not adding too much detail. I'm somebody who likes my character designs very much over the top. Lots of details, lots of intricate designs, 
everything like that. And Steven Universe is the exact opposite of that, so I struggled a little bit. But here is Blue Moon Obsidian, and they are not shipped with anybody in Steven Universe. I only like boys, and there's not a whole lot of boys in Steven Universe, so. Next one is super random. It's Sonic the Hedgehog. I haven't played any of the mainline games, but I do really love Sonic. It's just a franchise with such an interesting, like, vibe. I'm not the only one who thinks that, right? Like, Hatsune Miku, uh, Freddy Fazbear, and Sonic the Hedgehog, I feel like have the same sort of energy. I can't explain it, but just trust me. And Sonic's 2D style is extremely unique, like the style used for, like, I guess, box art and merch and stuff like that. The best word I can use to describe it is like funky. It's really funky. The shading is super weird. All the shapes are like just a little bit too exaggerated. I really like it. And as much as I like it, I don't think I did a very good job capturing it in my design. Another thing I'm not great at is exaggeration. And I realize this is just turning into a video of me complaining about things that I'm not good at. But the Sonic 2D style just exaggerates everything in a way that I'm really not used to. But I feel like despite that, my OC is recognizable as a Sonic fan character, but I think that's mostly due to the shading. Sonic has a really weird shading style. I can't explain it, but like everything has a shadow and a highlight that are super visible and highly contrast with one another. They're really interesting. One thing I didn't think I'd end up struggling with was what animal to make myself, but I ended up picking a dog. They were supposed to be either a Great Dane or a Kane Corso, but neither of those have fluffy tails, so I don't know what I was going for here. I just thought a fluffy tail would add more to the silhouette. Wet. I mean, Sonic is a blue hedgehog, so I feel like I can give a Great Dane a fluffy tail if I want to. I definitely could have pushed their design harder, but this wasn't a character design video. It was a style study video, so I wasn't trying to spend too long designing the characters. But here is our third Juno. I lied earlier, there's three Junos. And Juno from Sonic the Hedgehog is shipped with Shadow. Shadow. Nobody talk to me. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. This one is also kind of random. I'm doing Has Been Hotel and Hell of a Boss, I guess. This is actually not one I expected to do. Originally in this space was Pokemon, but I just ran out of time to do another complicated style. So of course I picked the most complicated style in the world, but this actually might have been the style I had the most fun with. I didn't even design this character beforehand. I just let the creative juices flow, I guess. Has been is lots of sharp edges, lots of exaggerated shapes, very complicated silhouettes, and those are all things that I already like, just dialed up to a hundred thousand billion. So even though I don't think my design fits in with the show because of its overly warm color palette, I still had a whole lot of fun just designing a demon on the fly. There's supposed to be like a demon who kind of looks like an angel, like a fallen angel motif. I don't know, I don't really care about the lore. I don't know, here's my nameless has-been hotel character in the has-been style. I don't know who they're shipped with. I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. I don't know what this video is. We're pulling out all the stops for this one. It's Oran High School Host Club. It's actually been a few years since I watched the show, and I've never read the manga, so I don't know the whole story. All I know is there is crimes I would commit to be in Haruhi's shoes. I will say that much. A club of cute rich boys and all of them have a crush on you? Are you kidding me? So safe to say I am Oron High School Host Club's target audience. But despite that, I don't actually like the art style all that much. I mean, it's fine. It's really cute. It's just not really my preference. Eyes are a little bit too big. Legs are a little bit too long. But the past few days, I've been really into Oron High School Host Club. So I was dying to throw my hat into the ring and try out the style. And safe to say I was humbled, terribly so. I was incredibly humbled. I think this is the style that actually took me the longest. So the speed paint is sped up a little bit more than the other ones were, but yeah. I struggled. Oran High School Host Club's art style might be like the antithesis to my art style, and that's good. Honestly, I'm so glad that I enjoy media with art styles so different to my own because it makes it easier to appreciate 
all of the different artists and art styles that there are in the world. But God, I was not feeling that appreciation right now. I was having a headache. It was the face. It was all the face. I'm used to drawing long legs. I'm used to drawing skinny limbs. I am not used to drawing these pretty boy anime eyes. And so struggle is a bit of an understatement. I was in the trenches with this one, honestly. And even though it does not look like the show at all, I still had a whole lot of fun drawing it. And I've had a whole lot of fun getting back into Oran High School Host Club the past few days. And this is the part of the video where I want you to pause and comment who you think my favorite host is. Did you comment? It's Kyoya. I really like Kyoya. If I had a nickel for every time I was attracted to a character who had dark hair and glasses and was voiced by J. Michael Tatum, I would have three nickels. Anyways, here is Mitsuo Makoto from Oran High School Host Club. It's whatever. Doing all of these different art style studies from media that I enjoy was actually surprisingly enlightening. It's made me think about all of the things that I've ever enjoyed, all of the things that have made me the artist I am today. And I know that that's super corny, but I've been really in my head the past few months about my art and doing this was actually really refreshing. It was the most fun I've had with my art in such a long time, which I think is funny because it's not even really my art, is it? I'm dissecting the things that I love, the things that have made me who I am, and I'm injecting a little bit of myself into them. And that in and of itself is a form of love, love for the media and a love for myself. I inject a little bit of myself into a media that I enjoy and then I take a piece of it with me and I carry it with me forever. And that's why I think this was so fun and relaxing for me. I'm going back to my roots as an artist and studying the things that made me happy. My Little Pony, Five Nights at Freddy's, Oran High School Host Club are all things that I was really into in middle school. And then Lackadaisy, Cookie Run Kingdom, those were with me in high school. And it's like a timeline. All of these things that have impacted me and impacted my art and seeing them all in one place, it made me really emotional. And I'm not gonna like cry or anything, but it did make me rethink what I wanted to do for the final piece of this video. And so instead of my Sona, instead of Lucky, I decided to draw me. And I don't have blue hair and I don't have gold eyes, which is really unfortunate. But Inkyo, this channel is a very recent part of myself, all things considered, but a lot of these things go back before I was even allowed to post my art on the internet. And so for the final piece, I thought it would be appropriate to draw me instead. The artist that ultimately all of these franchises and artists ended up creating. This is actually the first time in a really long time I've really put effort into drawing myself and thinking about who I am. And honestly, it's nice to see myself again. And so last but not least, this is Mac, but you can call me Lucky. So this is definitely the most pieces I've ever done for a single video. 11 whole drawings, even though there's no backgrounds or anything like that. It still took me upwards of at least an hour or two for every single one of these. So if I had to estimate, I sunk maybe 18, 20 hours into this whole piece. And even though it took me 20 hours over the course of like a month, I am still so happy with how all of these turned out, except for Cookie Run. I think the whole thing is just so cool. And even though some of these styles maybe don't emulate the original as much as I wanted them to, I'm still super proud of how all of them turned out. I love how all of my different OCs look together and you can really see what design conventions I like to include when I'm making a self insert. And I think this may just be the best insight into my thought process as an artist just looking at this one piece. And so it really means a lot to me and I'm really proud of it. I hope that if this inspired you to do something similar, even if it's just one art style study, that you'll show it to me, either send it to me in my Discord or tag me on Instagram. I would love to see it. If you do any of the styles in this video or if you pick your own series that you wanna study, I would love for you to show them to me. This is the obligatory part of the video where I promote all of my socials they're all in the description. If you would like to support me, the best ways to do so are of course liking and subscribing, but I also have a Patreon and a shop. 
as always, thank you so much to the people who pay for my groceries, Puntastic Artists, Little Wolfine, Viun, Gar, and Zico Buzz, as well as all of my other patrons, all of my subscribers, and all of you who decided to watch this video. Leave any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions down in the comments below. As always, I have been Lucky Inkyo, and I will see you very soon.